Are you interested in creating a site-to-site -site VPN with PFSense using WireGuard? If so, this video is really going to be for you. We're going to start off with two sites. We're going to create a WireGuard tunnel between them. Uh, and we're going to be able to access the LAN from each side on either side of the tunnel. Now, if that floats your boat, if you stick around once we've done that, we'll introduce a third site and we'll show you how to introduce that into, into the scenario and access the subnets from the third site as well from your main site um, if you like this video please consider subscribing to the channel it does help these videos do take quite a long time to produce um, hit that like button so other people know to watch this video as well and if you hit the notifications icon you'll get notified as any more videos come out which we do have a few more planned regarding WireGuard especially a Road Warrior version um, but yeah, let's just jump right in and get to it. So we've got our two systems, PFSense A and PFSense B. Um, we don't have WireGuard installed, hence the option is missing. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is to install WireGuard. So to do that, let's go into uh, System, Package Manager. Available packages and search for WireGuard. We'll go ahead and click install. So now we have WireGuard installed. Let's do the same on system B. So again, let's go to System, Package Manager, got nothing on here. Search for WireGuard and go ahead and install it. So now WireGuard is installed, we do have a couple of settings that we need to make. So if we go to WireGuard settings, obviously we need to enable it. The keep, configura uh, keep configuration option, um, I strongly suggest you keep this enabled. If you disable it, if you uninstall WireGuard, you'll uninstall all the settings. Um, you'll probably need to uninstall it when you do an upgrade for PFSense, so I'd leave that enabled. Um, the endpoint host name, resolve interval, we can leave that for now. Um, the other important option is interface group membership. So, the obviously configures which WireGuard tunnels are members of the WireGuard interface group. I'll go through this with you in a minute. But what we want to select is only assigned tunnels, so we can fine tune our firewall rules a bit. We'll go ahead and do that. These options basically in, um, just censor the private keys in the uh, web interface so they're not displayed. Always a good idea to leave them enabled. Apply the changes. And again, we'll do that on system B. So VPN, WireGuard, settings, Enable WireGuard, uh, change tunnels to only assigned tunnels, and save that. And apply the changes. So we've got it installed on both systems and uh, set up and running. So we're good to go ahead and start doing our configuration. Now we've got WireGuard installed, um, we can go ahead and configure the tunnels. So uh, we want to go into tunnels, um, add tunnel. So you want to enable the tunnel. Um, the description, optional, generally a good idea to put a description in so you know what it is. Um, the listen port by default is 51820. So um, you can change that if you want to. That is the port that you're going to have to allow incoming one traffic to. 
Uh, we need interface keys. So the way WireGuard works is it has a private key and a public key. Um, the public key is used on the remote systems to connect to this one. So we're going to go ahead and generate those. Um, I'm just going to save this. Apply changes. So I'm going to go back and edit our tunnel. Um, so we need to do interface assignments. So we can go into interface assignments, which is the same as going into interface and assignments. Now we have our wire guard tunnel here. So we're going to go and add that. Save it. Give the interface a name. So I've got WG0. We obviously want to enable the interface. The configuration type is going to be static IPv4. So we don't need IPv6. I'm not covering that in this at all. Um, now the interface IP address. This is system A. So this is our tunnel IP address. So it's going to be 172.25.25.1. So in there we're going to put 172.25.25.1. The subnet mask I'm going to put to 24, which will allow me to do uh, anything from dot two onwards. For remote systems, um, once you've got this working, you can obviously narrow your subnets down if you really want to. The IPv4 upstream gateway, we don't need to um, bother with that. And obviously we don't want to take block private network um, or bogons because um, WireGuard uses private IP addresses. So that's how we enable interface configuration. So we're going to go ahead and save that. Apply those changes. And that's our tunnel set up, I think. Let's go back into WireGuard. Look at our tunnel. So we've got, we can see the interface same, and now is on WG0, which is Opt1. You can get straight back to your interface configuration, clicking at that. Our firewall rules. Um, so this option here, where is it? Settings. Uh, only unassigned tunnels. Um, if you don't set it, then and just leave it as all tunnels then if we go into firewall rules this will apply to all your wire guard traffic setting it to unselected tunnels basically allows us to control our wire guard tunnel firewall rules so for this i'm just going to leave it wide open i'm going to allow all wire all wire guard traffic to pass so ipv4 any source any destination any pass all wire guard Traffic, let's save that. Apply the changes. And now we got, um, let's go back into WireGuard uh, tunnels. And so our firewall rules are now in place. So we need to do the same thing on uh, site BPF sense. So tunnels, add tunnel. Um, looking at our diagram, this is 172.25.25.2. So we're going to just leave that, leave the default port. Um, if you've changed it on the other end, they do need to match. So we'll generate that and save it. Apply the changes. And now let's set our. Um, Add the WireGuard tunnel as an interface. Again, give it a descriptive name. So, uh, enable interface. Static IPv4, same as previously. But this one is 172.25.25.2. So 172.25.25.2. We'll set this to 24. Uh, we don't need to bother with the upstream gateway, same as previously, and obviously we don't want to block the network. So if we go ahead and save that, we've got our interface assigned. And now we need to um, 
go into firewall rules and allow the traffic for our WG0. So you don't need to set any rules on this at all. On your, the WireGuard in, uh, firewall settings, we just use the tunnel that we created. We're going to add again, pass WG0, IPv4, I want to pass all traffic. Uh, and again, we'll do pass all WG traffic. Save it. So now our firewall rules match on both sides. Um, let's go back into WireGuard. And I'll do the same on the main system. So we've got both our tunnels set up. No pairs as yet. So site B is going to be the pair for site A. And site A is going to be the pair for site B. So let's go ahead and start setting the pairs up. Let's first start by creating site B as a pair. So add pair. We need to obviously enable the pair, select Tun WG0. So we'll call this site B for the pair. Now the endpoint, um if the other side doesn't have a static IP address, you can leave this as a um, dynamic, but then on your firewall rules you will have to allow all traffic to connect to port 51820 if you've got a static ip address then you can restrict it down to the ip addresses so i do recommend it but it will work um set your keeper lives if you want to do that um so we need the public key and the pre-shared key um the pre-shared key is optional but i do recommend that you um create a pre-shared key for extra security so we're going to go ahead and generate that and we need the public key for site B. So if we go into B, tunnels, um, the public key is here, so we can copy that. And just paste that in. Um, so we've got that pre-shared key. We're gonna need that in a second. Um, when it comes down to, in fact, We'll do these at the same time. When it comes down to the allowed IPs or subnets, um, we need to put, where's it gone? We need to allow the tunnel IP. Um, the, if you don't, then um, your gateways will show offline, but they will still work. Uh, I have seen a few questions about that online, but anyway, 172.25.25.2. Thirty-two, so we want a thirty-two bit subnet mask, so it's only that, so we don't start sending traffic destined for other tunnels over this one. Um, so site B W G IP, and we're going to add another allowed IP. So looking at this site B, the subnet mask behind it is one nine two dot one six eight dot fifty seven dot zero. Um, which we can see that's how we have our LAN set on here. So we'll go into here and we need to do 192.168.57.0, which will allow that traffic across. Um, now that's 24 because we want to be able to access everything. So call that site B LAN. Um, so to set the pair up for site A, let me just save that for a second. We will apply the changes. And now we'll do the same in here. So in site B, we're going to WireGuard, pairs, and we need to add site A as a pair. So add pair, select the tunnel. So this is going to be site A. Um, dynamic, again, um, at least one end needs to have a static IP address. Um, we'll leave that for a minute just while we set these down. So again, 
so keep alive if you want it so we need the public key for site a so now if we go into site a tunnel for site a edit that grab that public key stick that in there we're also going to need the same pre-shared key so obviously you can only generate it on one side um, so if we're going to peers site b pair because this is where we generate the pre-shared key let's edit that and the pre-shared key is here so copy it on the other one it doesn't on this one i'm sure it does um pre-shared key and we'll copy that so the allowed hosts for site a is going to be 172.25.25.1 so always start with the wireguard ip so 172.25.25.1 again forward slash 32 um site me site a wireguard ip we need to add another allowed ip so on this side the local LAN is 192.168.56 so we're going to go 192.168.56.0 for 24 for the whole subnet let me do site a subnet okay so now we've got the public keys in place and everything um it won't work because we've got both sides set to dynamic that's obviously not going to work so it's going to um the router for site a and we're on the pairs the site b pair which we're editing um we're going to untick that and i'm going to set this to the ip address of site b so if we're going to which is one ip so 172 1.20 let me just check that this is right 172 1.20 so we're going to go ahead and stick the endpoint address in there um so the main site does need a static ip um but the remote sites won't so we'll go ahead and save that that's all good and apply the changes So site A had a static public IP address, um, then you'd leave, but site B didn't. You'd leave this as dynamic, um, but we're assuming the static IP address is on both sides. So again, we're going to go into VPN, WireGuard, our peers. And then we've got site A per go into that. I'm just gonna give it its IP address. Which is we're following this 172 1.10. 172.1.10. Uh endpoint IP address. So we're leaving this clear because it'll default to 51820. Now, if we save the pairs, apply. Um, that should be us. So now we've got traffic successfully passing our wire guard. Don't know, so we're going to do 172.25.25.1. Um, and that's fine. Right. So now our wire guard tunnel is up and running we actually need to um, go ahead and configure the routes on either side so we need to pass the routes from site a to site b and site b to site a so we'll go ahead and do that next so we wanted our wire guard as an interface so we can add it as a gateway which is what we're going to need to do, set up the system routing Make this a bit bigger um so site A is on 192.168.56.0 and site B is on 192.168.57.0.
So what we're going to do is go to system, uh, routing, and gateways. Now we need to add the new gateway on site B. Um, so to get that to appear here, we can do add. WG0 for our interface, IPv4. We're going to call this site B gateway. The gateway is going to be 172.25.25.2. So 172.25.25.2. Um, that's all we need to add. No, it's not. Interface name. Oh, sorry. No space is allowed. Apply that. Um, let me just change that firewall real, real quick. Uh, I changed this, didn't I? Just to doubt, so I could ping it. And um, we're gonna put that back to any. Sorry. Um. UDP, uh, site B1 IP, one address, and we want uh, other, 51820. So that'll just set us back. Um, I did that for diagnostics purposes, just so I could ping it. Um, right. Now we've added that as a gateway, if we go to status dashboard, you can see that our site B gateway is online. So let's go ahead and do the same here. So we're gonna to go to system, routing. Uh, oh, one thing to note, if this is set to automatic, you need to actually set it to your one gateway. Um, let me just check on here real quick. Yeah. It can cause problems if it's set to automatic, um so we're good there so just double check that when you're doing this so we want to add a new gateway and this time the gateway that we're going to add is going to be the gateway for um site a so again we want ipv4 we want site a me site a gateway and that's going to be 172.25.25.1 Save that, apply there. Um, it's always a good idea to put descriptions in, I suppose. Um, so site A, why go gateway? But if you use descriptive gateway names, yeah. Okay, so now we've got the gateway. Let's go to the dashboard and we can see that the gateway is online. So that means our wire guard connection is up and we can ping the gateways on either side. Um, the next thing is we need to have the static routes for the subnet. So we'll start with site A. We'll go to system, we'll go to routing and I'm going to go to static routes. Now, again, looking at our picture. The subnet for site B is 192.168.57.0. So we're going to add that as a static route. So the destination network is going to be 192.168.57.0. And set that to 24. Because yeah, we want the whole network. Now, by default, it's sending them out the one gateway. We need to change that and we need to change it to site B gateway. So route to site B subnet. Go ahead and apply that. Uh, and we're going to want to do the same on this side. So we're going to routing. And then we want to static routes. And this was. 192.168.56. Whatever. So we're going to add that subnet. So 192.168.56.0. 
Broadcast 24. And if we change that to the site A gateway, because obviously we need to route it through the site A. But uh, route to site A subnet. At that stage, we're set up. Um, we can go into system, uh, so diagnostics, routes. And just to confirm, so you can see that anything destined for 192.168.56.0 is going to go over the WireGuard tunnel. Uh, 192.168.57 is obviously our local connection uh, with our IP address being 10, so we should be able to ping these from either side. Uh, and again, just for diagnostics purposes, it should be working at this stage. So routes. So we can go in and we can see that uh, anything destined for 192.168.57 is going to shoot over our wire guard tunnel. And go ahead. Oh, sorry. I've done this myself where I've not put the actual IP of the other wire guards side. It will still work, but your gateways will show offline. So just make sure that when you go into uh, pairs and here to make sure that you do have the entry for that, for the wire guard for the other side. I'd say if you don't, everything will still work. But when you go into dashboard, um, these will show offline even though everything's working because they're not pingable to each other. So just keep that in mind. So if we go into, do, 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 where is it? Diagnostics, ping. Um, what's the LAN IP address? 192.168.56. Uh, what did I put on? 56.10. Ping one nine two one six eight fifty six dot ten. And again, diagnostics ping one nine two one six eight fifty seven dot ten. You can tell it which source address if you want. So that means that these we this is the exact scenario that we now have. Um Obviously, ignore these. These are CG net IPs that are set up just for so we don't have to censor everything on the screen. Um, that's the first time I did the video. Everything was censored out and it didn't look too clever. So this is the exact scenario we now have set up with site A with a one IP address of 172.1.10. We've got the site A with the WireGuard tunnel IP of this um, and the local subnet, which is completely reachable from either side. Just for diagnostics purposes, the routes is the best scenario, just to so you can see. Um, the only time I've ever had problems um, when the settings have not been right on this side, so I've not put the right public key in from the other, from the like site B, for example, um, or the pre-shared key has been wrong. That's generally the only time it's not worked. Now we're working with um, site A and site B able to access each other what if you've got another site then what do you do let me walk through that so you don't need to create a separate tunnel for site a let me pull another hang up so uh admin you have sense let me put my fingers in the right place on the keyboard next next so we're going to call this PFSense C. Uh, quad 9 for DNS servers. Disable that. Sorry, let me just spin this up very quickly. It won't take long. Uh, okay, so we have site C. Don't know what that is that keeps beeping. We have site C. Um, We've just introduced it and we want to get this connected to site A as well. So 
obviously we need to install WireGuard. It isn't there. So system, package manager, find WireGuard. Let's install it. Okay, so we've got WireGuard installed. Um, I'm gonna go into the settings, set it back up again. So enable, uh, all that's the same. Wait a minute, assign tunnels only, save. Apply settings. This is exactly the same as what we've done previously. Um, so we're gonna to go to tunnels, add tunnel. Um, leave that blank so again i'm going to leave this on 51820 to generate that so yeah um so we've generated the interface keys we've got our public key uh i'm going to save the tunnel for a second stop it and then i'm going to go into interface assignments it's not there because I need to apply the changes. Interfaces, assignments. As we did previously, we want to um, add that, save it, change its name again to WG0 or whatever you want. Enable the interface. We're going to do static IPv4, uh, but this time we're going to set it to 172.25.25.3. If we look at our image, we have this on one, this on two, um, this on three. Now this is, if you set your subnet mask, obviously you're limited to how easy it is to set up. Um, so we'll do this on three, four to 24. We don't want to block um, any private networks. Save it, apply the changes. Can you remember what's next? Quite right. We need to set the firewall rules. So let's go ahead into rules. Um, again, this is redundant to us. We need to pass the traffic on here though. So we'll pass everything on WGG0. On WG Any pass all WireGuard traffic. Okay, um, so now we've got that done, we now need to go and create that pair. So this is already configured, well not one, you can see the IP address is assigned. Firewall configuration is done. Go into pairs. We'll add a new one. Again, we need to select our WireGuard tunnel and this is going to be site A. It's not dynamic. It does have an IP address, which is 172.1.10. And I'm just going to copy and paste this. There's no mistakes. I don't have problems copying anything that's plain. Um, so 1.10, default port. So you'll notice here, uh, if we go back into WireGuard, we only have one tunnel listened on 51820 and it has got a pair assigned to it but we can assign more than one pair so we don't need to create a separate tunnel um, we can use the existing one so we can do site a on the 10 again if you want to stick a keep alive in so we need the public key of site a's wireguard tunnel which is this here not relying on copying anything anymore Copy, now it says copied, so that worked. So we've got the public key, um, the pre-shared key. We're going to WireGuard. Sorry, we're already in WireGuard pairs. We're going to add a new one for Site C. So we're going to go Add Pair. I'm going to do, obviously select our tunnel. Uh, the tunnel's going to be Site C. 
it's not dynamic it's um one seven uh, sorry one hundred dot seven two dot one dot thirty i think um ports the same people have the same we're going to generate this information and we need the public key from the other side so generate a key Meh. okay to add we need this public key so we're going to site c uh going to our wire guard tunnel grab this public key which does copy Uh, we're going to stick it in there and then we're good so what public key you take h you take you take i'm sorry let me just double check what you take yeah so you um you have so that copied fine um i'm gonna go back into my pairs edit Uh, I need this pre-shared key. So, pairs, site A. I'm going to save that. Apply the changes, and then I need to go into site A. Uh, again, we're in pairs, and we're on the pair for site C. And we're just making sure that pre-shared that pre-shared key is exactly identical. Let's copy that in. Uh, right. So, as we did with the other sites, now this bit's fine. Um, so, we want to allow, uh, allow IP. So, it's going to be 172.25.25.3. Which is how we set a wire guard assignment. So that equals that, and it's on a 32, so it's going to be site C wire guard IP. Now we want to allow site C subnet, which is 58. Yeah, 192.168.58. So it's 58. Zero because we want to allow the entire subnet 24. And this is going to be let's see subnet. Save that. Apply changes. And then again, the same here. We're going to wire guard is site A. And as we know, Site A is 172.25.25.1. Oh, 172.25.25.1. Watch us 32. Hopefully you understand why these are like got a 32 bit subnet mask because with multiple tunnels, uh, multiple tunnels, uh, multiple gateways on the same tunnel. Sorry. So this is going to be site A. You know, the wire guard IP. Another load IP. And this is on the, the subnet. So one, I want this, and I paste it in there. The one a subnet is one nine two one six eight fifty six dot zero twenty four, obviously. And this is going to be site a LAN. Save that. Apply the changes. Uh, let's go to VPN, WireGuard, uh, latest status. So now we can see we've got both site B, which it shows the latest handshake. Now we've also got site C showing the latest handshake. Um, so if we go in, can we ping site C from here? Uh, ping 172, what was it on? 25253. At least something's starting to work. And on here, diagnostics, ping, 172, 
So once you're at that stage where you can actually ping the tunnels from either end, um, do you remember what's next? We've only just been through this. Yes, correct. We need to add the gateways and the routing. So we go to routing. Again, don't ever forget to ensure that your default gateway is set and it needs to be set to your WAN address. Otherwise, it will cause routing issues. So we're going to add our new gateway. And we want a name. We'll call it site A gateway. And IP address is 172.25.25.1. And just leave the rest of it. Gateway draw site A. Say what? Uh, why is it not? Oh. The gateway address 172.25.25.1 does not lie within the chosen interface subnet. Of course it doesn't. I'll put it on the one. So don't speed through it like me. Apply that. Let me do uh, again. I've got to stay to dashboard. Get off. Where is it? Plus. Come on, come on, come on. Gateways. So you can see site A gateways online. Um. Right. Static routes. So again, we need to do exactly the same thing that we did with um, site B to access site A. Um, if you remember correctly, we went into static routes and we were anything destined for that subnet. We're basically throwing it through site A's gateway and we need to do that as well. So we're going to do add uh, 192, 168, uh, 24. The gateway, make sure we select the gateway so it needs to go through site A because that's where that subnet is. We'll put route to site A subnet. And apply the changes. Um, and again, on site A, we're going to go into routing. We've got a gateway to site B. But if we want to access um, devices on uh, the site C subnet, we're going to need to do this as well. So don't forget to uh, add your, select your correct interface as I just did. And this is going to be site C underscore gateway. And that was 172.25.25.3. Which is our... IP address that we set on the interface for site C wire guard tunnel. So do that. Oh good. Yeah. Uh, static routes. So the site way that's uh, site way. It's gonna like so site C subnet is one nine two one six eight 58.0 what's that 24 and obviously we want the site c gateway for that so route to site c subnet to be specific and apply that so if we're going to dashboard we can now see that we've got our one gateway we've got our site b gateway and we've got our site c gateway um, what site C on? Uh, nine two one six eight fifty eight dot ten. So from here, I should be able to do uh, diagnostics ping. 192.168.58.10. So I should be able to ping the one side. Which we come. So 
that's pretty much it. We've got this. Um, and we've now added a third option. So that should all work correctly. Um, the only thing to keep in mind now, um, it should be pretty much up and running. I'm doing this on VirtualBox, so things will fly across and break run quite easily anyway. But um, the only thing to keep in mind, if you want the subnets to be able to access each other on your LAN rules, you might need to add them in. Um, so you can put like site A, subnet, whatever, and add them in, or you can block whatever you want. So obviously keep your rules in mind, but that is basically how you do site to sites with WireGuard. I've done a lot of them. Um, I took, I've obviously not done a video on this for a while. I've done a lot of them and I just wanted to make sure it worked well. And it really does. The tunnels come up very quickly. Um, and I've had no issues so far. The only issue I've had actually is um, a PF Sense box dying or a hard drive dying in one, which happens. Let me switch this back over. I hope that's give you a better understanding in how to set up site to site VPN using WireGuard, or at least that's the way I've done it and I've found it to work. Uh, I've deployed quite a few of these and I've had no issues whatsoever. WireGuard's very, very stable. The tunnels come up and go down very quickly and i've just had no problems with it at all um like mentioned at the beginning of the video if you do like what you've learned please uh subscribe to the channel and hit that notifications icon um but yeah give the video a thumbs up and let other people know to watch it and we'll see you in the next video